So the first uh, talk post lunch is by Mr. Vinod Malayalathu, who is the chief of uh, assistant director of Marine Conservation Program of WWF India, and he will talk about certification of the Lakshadweep tuna, uh, what has been done so far, and what's the way forward. Vinod, yeah. thank you. Hi, so good afternoon. So I know that this is like the death hour of the day because normally after having a heavy meal, I can't give you like a technical presentation which has principle one, two, three, and all these subdivisions. So on a light note, I just want to say about the history of MSE. Because I think most of you sitting here might be familiar with my face or I am familiar with your face. Even Mr. Gadre, who has been raising so many concerns. We had a conversation when you officially started, right? So I joined the organization in 2007. So at that time, the perception of MSC was totally different. And I also did a survey all along the Kerala coast. And when I spoke to fishermen, uh, in Malayalam, I will tell you what they told me. Yeah, really, they told me, you don't have any job. See, our job is to fish and make money. And you are coming here and telling about sustainability. Aren't you bothered about our livelihood or the money that we get? So that was the response. So then I told them, OK, now it is fine. But after a few years, you will realize that your fish stock or the quantity of fish that you catch is going to come down. So then you will, what is a realize? What is sustainability? So at that time, I am telling you that in 2007, sustainability was not at all a word in their homes or in their livelihood. But now you see, I am really happy to see these many people in a meeting together. Because I have convened so many meetings in my 16 years of my career. Even I have also gone to the ministry and we had a conversation along with the MSC people like Amy, Cassie, myself, and then presented to the ministry what is MSC. And there is also a document, I can share with everyone, that there is a document by NASS NAS on what is certification. And if you look at the way forward, you will find what all things have been promised. But I'm very sorry to say that very few things have been done. So uh, it is really great that now we have this forum, these many people who are interested. And there was also a lot of criticisms on MSC because I don't want to mention it here. When I went to like people telling about MSC, there were a lot of reactions saying that it is not possible in India. Even my own organization said MSC is not possible. It is a Western culture. We can't do it here. So then it was like a challenge to me. So I am telling you in India, the MSC certification, in the beginning I am saying will work definitely with the regional fishery. So that is when we got the Ashtamudi clam fishery certified. And I have to say that Sunil sir played a very great role. And he was the head of the Molluscan Fisheries Division. And he was also like a driver. And, and once he retired, it's very sorry to say that, but I will have to say. And I have been also telling sir that once you retire, uh, be it, it is definitely going to a standstill. But still, he is trying his best. We are also trying our best to like do something. But anyway, so that is past. So now we have uh, these many fisheries in certification and all of you are also mentioning regarding multi-species, multi-gear and all the problems that happens when a multi-gear, multi-fisheries is certified. So it has its own challenges, but anyway, uh, it, it is at least moving forward and we have many hiccups on the way. So here I am just uh, telling about a very uh, happy story. I don't know whether it is happy for me or you, so when we selected the Lakshadi Poland line skipjack tuna fishery for certification, as I said, regional. So this is only tuna fishery in the Northern Indian Ocean, which is caught sustainably. And another thing about the Lakshadip tuna fishery is the laziness of the people in the island, which also promotes sustainability. Really? So this is the only tuna fishery in the world where you go for fishing in the morning and come back in the afternoon with the catch. So they collect the bait from the reef. 
and the live bait is used for catching tuna just after the reef and they come back by eating and unfortunately they don't have any processing facility in the island so they make it into mass mean and for making one kilo of mass mean you need five kg of fish so basically uh, this tuna fishery attracted us just because of the way they fish they use pablo boats for fishing and we thought uh, this would be an incentive for the fishermen once it gets certified Yeah, so anyway, all of you knowing, all of you might be knowing about Lakshadweep. So this is Lakshadweep in the Northern Indian Ocean. And we were basically looking at the tuna fisheries, both skipjack and yellowfin. So the major advantage of uh, tuna is, uh, I think most of you might be also knowing the Indian Ocean Tuna Commission, which is like a regional fishery management organization. So any decision, any management protocol that is taken at the RFMO level is also applicable for that fishery. So if the RFMO says that for skipjack tuna, we have harvest control rules, we have harvest control strategy, and that definitely is advantage for this particular fishery. And as I go through my presentation, I will also a little bit explain. I don't want to give a huge explanation on what really happens. Sorry. How do you go back? OK. so. Uh, uh, since MSC people are also here, I just wanted to just very simply explain the three principles. Because there were also talks on having Indian standards and all sorts of things, which uh, I don't believe. Uh, in the sense it has also, because I have also discussed with Mike as well as Matt about this and uh, globally uh, it has been only like a failure. So basically the principles for managing a resource can be only these three. One is the sustainability of the stock. So the Stocks have to be sustained throughout the years. And second is the ecosystem impact. The way you extract from the uh, ecosystem should be in a friendly way. And of course, the policies, whether it is, it is national or international, so it has to be uh, complied. So uh, in very simple terms, these are the three principles for managing any fishery. So if you come up with any standard, even like an Indian standard, you can't say you can uh, like fish unsustainably or uh, you can fish in a way that it causes ecosystem damage. So the principles are the same, but there are also certain things like the performance indicators and all those things. And I also uh, really have to appreciate Sunil sir for being the technical advisory board member of the MSC for like, a, like five years, like three or five years. And he has also tried his best to uh, like bring about changes in for a tropical fishery and up to a certain extent uh, I think he has been able to do it but of course that is a it is a real challenge so this whole process started with a consultative meeting in 2011 so we had invited all the people who are working in Lakshadi violence for a meeting and uh, to see whether they have any interest. This was also including the fishermen to see whether they have interest in getting this resource certified. And we told them, like, once you get certified, these will be the advantages of the market. You will have a better market. And it is not only really the better market. So the market price that they get also should be percolated to the producers. So we can have a council system of management. So all those things were explained to them. And that was in 2011. And uh, there was a short gap because we did not have funds to pursue that particular initiative. So in 2014, we also did like a scoping study considering the earlier document and it was like updated in June 2016 by doing an MSc pre-assessment and a workshop in Lakshadweep. And it was also in discussion with the fisheries department, which I say is the most important client in a fishery. For a WWF can actually promote, but they can't be like a client because I have suffered a lot in the Ashramuti clam fishery because if you look at the clientship, it is the Ashramuti clam governing council and WWF. So we are only like promoters, so somebody has to take responsibility like the Ashramuti clam governing council, the um, collector is the chairman, and then you have the convener as the DD, and of course the other fishers and institute representatives. So they have to take responsibility and take it forward, and unfortunately, the recertification also was during the COVID time, so it had its own challenges and difficulties, but I think still uh, it will revive, that is what I think. Okay, and, and this is a picture of the awareness workshop we 
had in different islands. So basically telling them what is MSE, what, is, what are their benefits, how they can contribute to the whole process. And all of them like were really excited to uh, do it. And the key issues identified during the pre-assessment. So one was, as I told you, uh, anything, any decision that is taken at the RFMO level also reflects here. So if you look at Skipjack, the harvest control rule is in place because IOTC resolution 16.2 says that the Skipjack tuna resources are sustainable, but it is very unclear whether the annual catch limits have been successfully put in place. So that depends on the region that we work on. But for yellowfin, even now, I think the Kobe, Kobe plot says that it is in the uh, unsustainable category. So even though we did for tuna like skipjack and yellowfin, yellowfin did not uh, move forward uh, because it fell under the unsustainable category. And of course, the data on landing and effort from the fishery are apparently highly uncertain in the... So uh, the, if you look at the stocks, the stocks are depleting. Yeah, yeah so I'm saying the IOTC, at the IOTC level, yeah. <laughs> they say that the stocks are depleting, so that is reflected here. That's completely wrong. Yeah, so, uh, so, so yeah, I'm saying as for the IOTC, yeah. and if you look at also the resolution 16.1, that is what says that the elephant stocks are depleting. And, and then we didn't move forward with elephant, we thought that we will go forward with skipjack. And under principle one, so I don't want to explain more. So under pr principle one, the data on landing of non-target species by the fishery was highly uncertain. And then the auditors, when they did the assessment, found that there is very less interaction with the ETP species. So that had uh, 80 scoring. And then there was a need for a better information for the bait fishery, including the species composition and how the bait fishery, seasonality on all that. And of course, uh, these gaps were addressed. And finally, we had a live bait fishery management uh, plan for uh, the tuna fishery. And then coming to principle three, the responsibilities in relation to data collection need to be clarified. So there were like two or three methodologies of data collection uh, in different islands. But then CMFRA uh, gave uh, training to uh, the, uh, uh, what do you say, the fisheries department and the stakeholders on how the data collection has to be happened and that was also resolved. So majorly it was the live bait fishery management plan and the way the data was collected was the main gaps and of course those were addressed. I'm not going into the details of whether these are the auditor comments for principle three. And if you also look at the FIP activity, as I said, the, um, uh, the data for landing uh, was was to be done there had there had to be a protocol of uh, taking data on a standard format and even any consultation process like in ashramudi we have the ashramudi climb governing council so here also the consultation process should have an involvement of the stakeholders sorry stakeholders in the decision making process and of course the review of the rules and regulations uh, should be done on a periodical basis and uh, here I would like to say, so this is the uh, live weight management plan which was published in 2019 and it, it is also available on the fisheries, Lakshadi fisheries uh, website. So, so that part was addressed and of course on the data collection also, now it has been standardized. So all uh, two of the major gaps have been addressed and now the fishery is ready for full certification. In between we had also an MOU with IPNLF which did a review in 2019 on the pre-assessment that was carried out in 2016. And they also came up with the, uh, what do you say, with the same conditions and which were addressed when we had funding from the MSC. And now I'm very happy to say that these are like a few publications from the uh, tuna fishery certification. And now I'm very happy to say that this fishery is ready for certification. But one thing is, I just want the responsibility to be taken either by the fisheries department to invest in the full assessment or by the exporters so that there is a commitment. Otherwise, of course, we can do it, but the problem is we will still 
remain as a client and every MSc certification needs an annual surveillance audit recertification. So when it comes to annual surveillance audit and recertification, I will be the person who is questioned what has happened, what progress has happened uh, and why uh, this has happened. So if the responsibility is taken by the policy makers or by the exporters out of interest and definitely it can, take, it can be taken forward and Indonesia is a great example. Uh, I think Mike also might be knowing Indonesia has around 15 fisheries which are uh, in FIP and they are like moving very well. So it is a collaborated approach between the exporters, the stakeholders who are the fishermen and then the fisheries department. Yeah. So that is all from my me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vinod. <laughs> if there is any questions or doubts with regard to his presentation. Very easy. Yeah. It will be actually pointless because we, we cannot access the fish. Sorry? We will not be able to access the fish. Uh, well, uh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of us have tried to okay. send crores of rupees, but uh, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. So, so for that, uh, that is why I was just saying that if there is a uh, understanding with the fisheries department, yeah, if I they can, yeah. yeah. So I'm saying. I've tried everything. No, ah, okay. <laughs> Okay. So, so that if yeah, uh, I think no, you see, uh, at the end of the day, I tell you the basic problem is uh, the the fishermen there. They, you know, they suspect the mainlanders. You know? They they have no trust. They feel that we have come there to exploit them. Yeah, in, yeah, in a way, yeah. their perspective is also true, but yeah, I but just no, don't we, yeah, want I to mean, comment on that here yeah, because I have see, also yeah, no. heard from the association on what has really happened there. Oh, basically, it is on the pricing. So they say no, whatever, that even if you offer in the pricing, they, you know, they, the whole attitude is, uh, I mean, you know, one is there's, uh, unless uh, they have, uh, you know, there's no ice. If you take, I'll give you a classic example. You go there to collect fish, no, power is, uh, no, they have, okay. Power even is, have, oh. Yeah, even, yeah, 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 they don't have. Like, you know, you take, uh, we first tried to bring fish from there, right, fresh. And, uh, you know, they also, there are problems of their fishing methods. They go out and get the fish, they pile it up, uh, skipjack. And uh, by the time it comes, it's short distance, but it's all piled up. It's all full of histamine by it comes. Levels are there. We have we tried everything. We've had huge claims. We've shipped to Japan, uh, all that, uh, lots of issues, right? Uh, also, that uh, like if you go and get fresh fish, you have to go with ice, and you go with ice. The fishermen, they'll give you for four or five days, then they'll disappear, and all your yeah, ice. Yeah, okay. Mess. All that experience. <laughs> yeah. I'm not then sure they about don't that. Yeah. Then uh, there are uh, there's political problems there, various parties, the the groups. And, uh, and, you know, it's island to island, distances are high. So it requires uh, it's fantastic fish. But yeah, yeah, but it requires some more concerted effort, I understand. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of plans have been made to bring fish from Lakshadweep to here, Kochi, mainland. But all these have failed. Uh, so unless you solve this issue, yeah. nobody will come forward. Understand. But there are, uh, so also I have to say there are buyers who are, uh, interested, but we will have to do a concerted effort to take it forward. I understand. Yeah. This, that's, that's, that, the, this skipjack is low fat. Right. So it's very good for right. Japanese. Uh, this thing is. Sashimi. Huh? No, no, no. Sashimi. 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 No, the rice. Katsu bushi. Katsu bushi. Okay. It's the perfect fish for sashimi bushi because it's low fat. A any other comment? Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, we are told that the Indian Ocean is a common area for the tuna. So if you're saying that this is sustainably caught in Lakshadweep, uh, is there a local stock that is exploited yeah, and so, it is so, sustainable? So those are done by the RFMO, which is the IOTC. So they do the assessments. 
uh, and they say that whether the stocks are sustainable or not. So in the Northern Indian Ocean, which is the place where you find this, so they, ha they do an assessment and say whether it is sustainable or not. So that definitely reflects on yes, the... The, the uh, Maldivian tuna is certified. Yeah, that is certified. But, Skip yeah. that. But uh, otherwise, it is the in Indian at the Indian Ocean, Ocean level, it is sustainable, is it? Right. Yeah. So Northern Indian Ocean. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, not the particular location or uh, territory that we are talking about. No, but the other yeah. aspects are coming. Uh, no. It is like a shared stock. Yeah. Skipjack is uh, sustainable. Okay. not sure I can add too much more. Um, as Vinod's already mentioned, the, the tuna's mar uh, managed at a, a regional level and the stock assessments are conducted at a, a regional level as well. Um, I don't follow the, the IOTC developments as closely as some of my colleagues, but my understanding is that it's considered, yellowfin at least, is considered to be overfished and continuing to be overfished. Uh, so already overfished with overfishing still occurring. Um, and by all accounts, the, the participating nations are largely in agreement that a reduction in fishing um, effort needs to take place. They're just not agreeing on who should reduce it. So there are problems with, with yellowfin, and I think that's we're probably still a way away from being certifiable on that. Uh, skipjack's a different story. You've already mentioned um, Maldives tuna, and I think there probably are probably other opportunities as well. Yeah, I think you have to try and link up. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that, that, that can be done. Yes, sure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Vinod. So the next presentation, next two presentations. Okay, okay. So the next two presentations is by. Dr. Vinita on troll caught deep sea shrimp fisheries and the troll caught shrimp and cephalopod fisheries. She incidentally is a FIP manager for both these fisheries. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so, I am Vinita Aravind, and I am managing these two FIPS as a consultant. And uh, we kept this presentation for the last because this is followed by the discussion, and most of our stakeholders are here. So I would like to have a good discussion because I am getting all my stakeholders here. That's why. Okay. Uh, so these are the two FIPS we are running in Kerala, the Shrimp and Cephalopod Trawl Fishery which has five species, three cephalopods and two shrimp, and the deep sea shrimp trawl fishery, which has three species, three species of deep sea. Uh, we'll move to the next slide. Can I move myself? Yes. This one, this big one? So this is just to show where the FIP is running. So I think by now you know which is Kerala and where it is running. So I'm moving to the next one. Okay, so these are the five species. Uh, actually, we have six species, but uh, the last one, Amphioctopus marginatus, is of very small quantity, so still we are thinking whether it should be there. So we have Karikadi and Pualan, which are the two shrimp species, then cuttlefish, 
squid and octopus, the uh, cephalopod species. And the unit of assessment uh, is Kerala cost. Then there is the deep sea shrimp trawl fishery, which has three species, Heterocarpus chani, Heterocarpus woodbassoni, and Aristeus alcocci, which is again in the Kerala coast. So I am just going to the uh, main milestones because this FIP is now, like the shrimp and um, cephalopod fishery FIP is now in the... Uh, like crossed four years and has completed four and a half years. And the other one has almost completed three and a half years. So it has to go for assessment next month, according to, uh, I mean next year, according to our plans. So I'm just going to show what we have completed and what we have not completed or what is still in progress. So this is the first area, that is evaluation of stock status for the target species. You can see which performance indicators it is addressing. I don't think that makes much sense to many of you. So I'll just leave it there. I'll just tell you what is happening here. So these are the major milestones and we are having sub actions also under this. So here we have completed one major milestone, that is data available in a suitable form for stock assessment. Even though many of the FIPS which has presented here talked about CMFRI and the CMFRI uh, has not uh, like signed an MOU and all these things, but still I can say that because CMFRI is the only organization which has the data and they are doing a lot of work here, so we have got many present uh, published papers from CMFRA, which has really helped us. So this first part, the data available in a suitable form, because when we did the pre-assessment, actually much of the data was not suitable for the stock assessment in the way MSE wanted. So now it is available. So we have completed that part and stock assessment methodologies are defined and as far as I know, CMFRI is progressing and has almost completed the stock assessment part also. Because to get an MSE certification, we are supposed to have reference points for each species. MSE gives a certification for each specific species for each gear. Because ours is a multi-species, multi-gear fishery, we cannot just have a blanket certificate. That is not MSE certification, luckily or unluckily for us. So we have to go for each species and each gear. So if this is caught by trawl and gillnet and you want certification for both, then you have to go for like pual and trawl, pual and gillnet differently. So uh, here, and that is what is meant by this thing, like preliminary assessments available for each target stock. So the methodologies are defined that I know, and uh, as far as I know, it is progressing in CMFRI and they might publish it. And if we sign an MOU, we may be able to access it much more easily. So I hope we might be able to sign an MOU with CMFRI. And once it is done, then the reference points are agreed for each target stock, then we have to uh, finalize these uh, points, uh, that is after consultation with the stakeholders. So uh, a reference point is something like you have to say what will happen if the fishery goes beyond a particular limit. So we do a stock assessment, we are finding that the stock is standing here, but if the stock comes down here, the fishery may collapse. So you have to define what point is that, what, at what point this particular stock will go down and the fishery might be affected. We have to find that out. That is a reference point. So if the fishery is here and we say that, okay, if the stock is here, it is good. Then we can say that, okay, my fishery is here and it, this is saying that the stock is also here and it is good means then we are happy. So that is why the reference point is very, very important. And based on the reference point, we have to make the harvest control rules and harvest strategies. So this is for that first point, evaluation of stock status. Uh, the first bar chart is showing how many sub-actions we have completed and how many of them are in progress and how many have to be done still. 
So this is the number of the action points on the y-axis and there it is showing the status. So you can see that nine action points have been completed. These are all sub-actions under this main action called evaluation of stock status. Then after we have the reference points, then the next part is making a harvest strategy for the target species. So for that, what we first did is we uh, found out what are the other multi-species fisheries all over the world did. So today morning, Mike was talking about the Australian fishery. So what uh, Australia is the uh, only place where multi-species fisheries are certified by MSE. So we have gone through that. And uh, after that, Simo Fare has produced a paper on, with the ecopath model for management of Kerala fisheries. And it was advised to the Department of Fisheries also. Now the Department of Fisheries has to move forward with that. And uh, uh, then once the harvest strategy plan is drafted, so it is still progressing. We have, once the reference points are finalized only, we can make the harvest strategy plan. And once it is finalized, then we have to go for stakeholder consultation. We have to talk to the stakeholders. Like uh, there are the fishers who have to say, okay, this is good for us. If the fishery uh, comes below this particular point, we are ready to stop fishing that, that the fishers have to say. And the government has to enforce that. So all these stakeholders together play a role there. So that part is, uh, in, uh, should have been done in year three, but because our reference points are not yet ready, we haven't reached there. We are still doing that. And once it is finalized, we will have harvest control rules, which will exactly tell what to be done at each point. Then it has to be implemented. That is, again, the Department of Fisheries doing that. So this is, again, a graph which is showing what has been completed, what is in progress, and what has to be done. Because we haven't yet made a fishery management plan, that bar is still high. The fishery management plan has to be made. Uh, then this is cooperation with Karnataka, and I'm very happy we now have a FIP, which is including Karnataka too, which was presented in the morning, because this talk is shared by Karnataka, or it is running mostly on the West Coast. So uh, there should be some shared responsibilities also. So when we started this FIP, we went to Karnataka, we talked to the stakeholders there and invited them to be participants in or as observers in our fishery so that after some time, like today morning when Tharagan sir was talking, he was saying like, we want to expand this FIP to all over the West Coast. So for that, we have to get all the other people also on board. And Karnataka has started doing many things in this line, like they also have started making management measures, which is very similar to Kerala. Kerala has uh, already has the amended act and many management rules are very specifically written in the Kerala uh, uh, Marine Fisheries Act, but Karnataka has not yet reached 